Hey guys, welcome back to our second Q&A today. Um, we're at station two here. We'll go ahead and go over that. First, I wanna do a couple introductions. Obviously, we have our main man, Key. You guys all know, he, he literally put on the shirt for you guys here today, so you guys have to put a shout out here for him. We got Micah, of course, you know, he How's does his thing. He's not hurt anymore, so he's back at it. You know me, the host, Jason. And then we have Enrique, he's actually one of our managers here at the plant. He bosses these guys around daily, um, and I don't know what else he does, but. Uh, and then we have uh, Paul, but that's not his real name, it's Paolo. Paolo, okay. <laughs> yeah, just keep it simple for you guys. So, um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and step out of the frame, um, and then what we're gonna do at this point, we're gonna go ahead and let him get started, and I want Enrique to go ahead and explain what the second station is, what we're doing here. Um, and as the questions come in live, I'll go ahead and ask you guys those questions, and then yeah, we'll get it rolling. So go ahead, Enrique. Sounds good. Well, pretty much what he does here is just a, the, um, this is the part where, the, where all the power from the motor transfer over to the prop. Uh, we have the transmission, obviously you guys already saw that. We have a couple of drives right here. Um, He's just gonna go ahead and show you guys how everything is installed. This is very crucial because this is where um, where the tension happens and all that stuff. So um, he's just gonna go ahead and start putting all that stuff together. Like um, Jason said, go ahead and ask just your questions when you guys ready, whatever you need. So my question here is: This is when they actually um, put in the belt. Is that correct? That's or? right. Yeah. It's okay. called a motion base. A motion this base. This whole box is called a motion base. And inside, when it's all complete, it's a dry, sealed system. No water, no grease, nothing goes in there. So. And um, are there anyone else that does a dry seal process um, with it that you know not, of? Or not as sealed as ours is. Yeah. There's not anybody, no competitors or anything like that. We have all this um, gasket CNC machine. It's like a O-ring, but it's called a spaghetti gasket, and it goes all the way around and it seals watertight. So we have a couple different seals. We'll show you guys too as well for the covers. And I mean, this is on. crucial too. While he's well, doing. Really crucial, yeah. And this yeah. is what helps keeps the motor going and keeps it. You know, obviously no water going into yep. it. Yeah, cold weather. If you get water in there and it gets up a little high, it'll freeze up and you go to put it in gear and you're not going to go nowhere. It's just going to kill the motor or it'll break your belt. So very important to keep it watertight. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and let Paulo go ahead and get at it. So while he's doing this, Mike, uh, at this part, if someone's trying to um, enhance their performance, do they even need to worry about this portion of it or... Um, yeah, if they want to change their gear ratio, you know, that's a good time to do it when you got everything apart. Um, if they've got too many RPMs and they're pushing a heavy load, then you might want to go ahead and do this and change your bottom gear. Um, get the RPMs down, get a little bit more speed. So it all depends on how it's running to begin with. Okay, and definitely. Uh, we, we know all the gear ratios pretty good on what horsepowers take what gear ratio. Can someone so. call in? So say if they make a special order, can they mm -hmm. call in and, and get that gear ratio down? Yeah, yeah, we can get them really close. So There's always some fine tuning that you can do. And yeah. so um, what type of motor is this? Is this the 37? What is this, this exactly? This is a EFI 37. 37. Yeah. And, and Ricky, do we do the Sport V's in this section, or is that a whole nother? No, I think the Sport V is a whole different machine, man. That's a, we don't have a belt on the Sport V. The Sport V is a gear-driven uh, motor, so there is no belt tensioning. There is no gearing down or up. There is nothing like that. It's a whole different, whole different monster. Definitely. And so Matt actually has a question. So. If you pull the plugs on the bottom um, and you get water, should you get a new seal for it? Um, really, you want to find out where it's leaking first. If it's leaking through one of these bolts and it just needs to be sealed, then it's as easy as that. Pull it out, put some Permatex on there, and thread it back in and lock it up. Um, what I normally do for a test, uh, don't leave it in there, fill this hole with water. And once you fill it up, you're going to be past your gasket seams where most likely is going to be leaking, and you'll see it dripping out overnight. So awesome. That's a good way to tell where your, where your 
leaks are coming from. So that was a good question. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a Mud Buddy hat, and uh, it's a it's a good good new camo. I love those sick hats with yeah, the Opti Fade on it. The Opti Fade is yeah, it's killer. I like that too. But yeah, it's a really nice hat, Sitka. So go ahead and send in um, PM us your information, Matt, and what we'll do is um, we'll go ahead and get that sent out to you. Uh, so we have Mark on here, um, and he says, I love my 4400 Black Death. Can I convert it to an EFI? Um, they don't have any kits that Vanguard offers. You can get aftermarket kits for them, but they're a little spendy. So I, I would say you probably just stick with the carburation version. Uh, if you already have that and if you wanted to upgrade to fill injector i would just go ahead and sell the motor you have and look into a new one um and so keith my question for you is are there any mortars that you actually can convert to in the fi yeah you can convert these but the kits are like twenty five hundred dollars twenty five just to go with the efi kit and where would you get so those at if the, you wanted to they have them online i think the place is called pictronics or something like that and they they're a universal kit for several different motors that fit, you know, all different sizes for V-twins. Awesome. So. Uh, Mark Powers um, says, hello, guys. Hey, how's, how's it going, going Mark? Mark? Yep. Do you guys know Mark? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Lucky. Lucky. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> Mark's trying to get a free shirt, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, Matt says, sweet, thanks, guys. Yep. Um, so where are we at now with on this right here? So right here, he is getting ready to uh, actually tension the belt. You guys wanna, if you, I mean, this is like I said, this is very crucial. You guys, uh, I'll show you, uh, the, we'll show you the best we can how to tension properly the belt. Um, a really over tensioned belt, what's gonna happen? You're gonna throw a bearing either um, on the drive or the worst case scenario, you're gonna throw a bearing on the, on the crankshaft. So that's a, that's a very bad deal for you. So that's why the, ten, the belt tensioning is very important for you guys. Um, he's gonna go ahead and tighten the belt right now. Uh, it's gonna get a little noisy. <laughs> so did he already torque these bolts? Yes. I what did. did you torque them to? Uh, I used 45 uh, 40, foot pounds. 45, 45 foot, foot pounds. pounds. So torque. 45 foot pounds on these here. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and let him torque these and then uh, we'll get back to the questions. So with this gauge he's using right here, it's a belt tension gauge. And it has a measuring tape on this end. And then on this end, it has pounds and it's got this little black O-ring here. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna touch this end against the belt and he's gonna watch where the tape measure falls on this housing. He's gonna push it in a quarter inch by just pressing this rubber piece. Push it in exactly a quarter inch once he pushes it in a quarter inch, this O-ring is gonna be moving out and he wants it right around 16 to 20 pounds on a new belt. So preferably 18 is perfect on a brand new belt. And as long as you don't get your belt below 14 pounds on a used one, you're fine. But over tightening your belt or trying to guess without one of these gauges is not good. You'll end up damaging your bearings. And that can cause so. multiple problems, mm -hmm. not just the damage. Yeah, you could ruin a belt, you know, um, at bearings for sure. So it's and real is, important. Is this something that we see um, clients calling into, Keith? Oh, yeah, quite a bit. When a guy yeah. doesn't use a gauge, you're just guessing. And guessing usually ends up into you're out stranded somewhere with a broken belt because... You basically don't want to spend roughly around 25 bucks to get one yeah. to check the tension. So. And so if they modify this type of area, does that void the warranty? If they took the drive off? Or yeah, if they take the drive off or did anything with the belt or... If it's a manufacturer defect, we'll cover it. If it's not a manufacturer defect, then we won't cover it. So if it's self-induced, we are going to step back from that. So. Awesome. But that's why I was explaining that gauge really well, because me and Keith get calls after calls. 
How do I adjust my belt just by squeezing it with my hands? You can't. No. <laughs> it's not going to happen. If you're going to do anything, make sure you have the right tools. So right. The tension is good right now. Yeah. So the tension is good right now. Okay. Yeah. And so what's the next step that you guys would do? Just tie the bolt from bottom to the top. From the bottom to the top, yeah. and you'll go ahead and tie them. And that's pretty important. You make sure you start at the bottom and work your way up, because if you do it the opposite way, you lose your true tension, and you need the belt to be tensioned properly, or you're going to have belt problems down the road. So. And so when he tightens these bolts, is he going to do it kind of like you would as if a tire? How you go every other one, or is there? No, he don't have it? to crisscross yes, these. No. You yeah. don't have to. No. Just as long as you start at the bottom four, get the middle four, and then the four inside is what you need to do. Just follow that sequence. It doesn't have to be cross pattern at all. You'll be fine. Awesome. So we have some questions coming in right now. We're going to go ahead and answer those questions while he's doing this. Um, Greg Justice sent in a message. He said, best best motor and best support ever. Keith, really want to hear the duck, your duck calling. I uh, left the duck call at home and we don't have one here. So Matter it actually got happened to have one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> um, and then, um, Connor, what are the advantages of a cast lower unit compared to machined? Um Mach these are machined um, lower units. These are um, machined ones? Yeah, they're machined. Uh, they're poured in a cast molding before they're machined, but they are CNC machines. So. Oh, okay. Um, if, you, if you have something that's solid CNC machined out of just a, a solid block of aluminum, um, those are kind of prototype stuff. You, you don't mass produce um, just solid blocks in a custom CNC. To mold them, it's a lot quicker and more efficient. Awesome. All right, Connor, good question. We're going to throw a Mud Buddy HDR shirt at you. Make sure you nice. PM us. Also, let us know your size. We want to get you as close to the right size as we can. So thanks yes. for the question. Yeah, we don't want to shoot him a small if he's an extra large. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Brian's question is, what's the ratio between the prop and motor, and can they be changed? Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we can change them um, anywhere from 1 to 1 to 1.5 to 1. You know, we can change them, so. Just depends. This motor is right around 1.82 to 1. Okay, so, so real quick, um, Paolo, I noticed that you had a black marker. What were you exactly doing right just there? Just to make sure the bolts are tight. To make sure the bolts yeah. are tight, so you're marking yeah. it to make sure. Okay, great. Well, I just wanted to throw that out. And there. also, too, in a few weeks when we get down the road, when we get to the running area or the final inspection, that also lets the guy know who did the final inspection that Paulo did his job by torquing those bolts down and also marking them so that we know that he's used Loctite and he's tightened them down. So, so it's just another procedure to help the guy at the end of the line know that, hey, I did what I was supposed to do and it's and it's right. So, so like yeah. Ian did his part, Paulo did his right. part, and then as we go through the next steps, each guy did his part because if they didn't, then we can trace back and figure out where the problem is, make sure that it's properly done right before it goes out to the client. Exactly. Try to catch it before it gets out the door. And there's certain check procedures that the head guys have. And when they start a motor, there's a piece of paper that gives us a customer's name, what he's buying. So each station goes around as it comes to him. When it came to Paulo, he's going to pull out, okay, it's a 37 EFI. This is the gearing I'm going to use. And then, um, just it's just a check and he can make sure it's a short transom a tall transom because we don't want to send a guy a short when it's a tall and we want to catch it before it goes out the door so there's mm -hmm. certain things that the guys are supposed and everybody looks at that paper yeah. it's not just it's not just ian when he started us out last week each guy pulls out that paper and makes sure hey it's a short okay it's a short if it's not then we roll it back to the guy who didn't do it right and, and have him fix it and that usually helps correct any issues when you have to fix it yeah, and that's kind of one of the things that Enrique, you do is to make it ensuring that every step of the procedure is done properly, correct? That everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. And in like this case, make sure that he is putting the, 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 the effort, the attention that needs to be put in. And uh, those steps, we, we don't skip any steps here at the shop. We try to make sure that everything is done the way it's supposed to, the way it's supposed to be done. And uh, that assures quality. Uh, for the motors that we send out. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Mark Powers commented, he said free shirt and a free demo motor. 
Oh, well, we can, the shirt we can do, bro, but the motor yeah, might be one, a little yeah. bit tough. <laughs> Call me later. We'll see what we can work out. <laughs> so Nathan hopped on here. He says, do y'all have a conversion kit to convert an HD to an HDR? Yes, we yeah. do. Um, give us a PM us and we can go over the pricing. There's a few questions we need to ask as far as is the short transom, a tall transom. Um, the gearing that you need, if you have a high performance motor, we'll need to figure out what kind of gearing we can go to. So yeah, we can, we've got a kit that you can do and it's, it's a two part kit. So there's an A part and a B part depending on how much you really want to change. So just PM us, we'll get hold of you and give you all that information that you need. Awesome. And so we have Taylor Lightsey here. He's, he's been actually one of our top guys. He's always here every Go Facebook on, Taylor. Live. What's doing? up Taylor? Um, so he says, Hey crew. Um, where the clutch cover attaches the middle of the belt housing, the center has a gap. Should or should not use silicone there? Will water get into the belt housing there? You should use silicone, yeah. Um, with the gear that you have, they need silicone on them. So definitely seal it up. Awesome. You don't want any gaps there. Um, and so we have Mark Strobel. He said, does not matter if you set belt tension in travel lock or at run height? It doesn't matter. Yeah, you can... It's easier to do it in the travel lock position. Um, that way you can get to all the bolts and everything. Usually at run height, you can't really get your hands in there as easy. So it's easier to put them up in the lock position. So Rob has a question. He says, how many pounds is the belt on your waist holding up? Uh, a lot more than it should be right now, bro. And you're not getting anything for free on that one. No, no, <laughs> Nothing free here, up. baby. Hey, Rob, Rob Holland is one of the guys that won some last week. Uh, hey, Rob, send that yeah. back. <laughs> send that back. I just had a long talk last week, I thought, Rob. <laughs> um, Dell, I always check the tension after tightening all the bolts to make sure it's still set right. Uh, awesome. Good idea. Why not? And then uh, where are we at right now with this? Let's pop back over to this here. So right now where he's at, he's pretty much done tensioning the belt. He showed you about the bolts and everything. Right now he's just pretty much going to get ready to get the cap tension plate, skeg, all the, all the necessary stuff. But as far as the tension and the belt, everything is done. It's just... So this section of this portion where... He's just going to... He just... The last part is just put the skeg and the cavitation plate, and that's it. He can send it over to wiring, which is the same section. And wiring is what we're going to be doing next, next week. Next week, yes. All right, and we'll yeah. be able to do that. So yes. I'm going to go ahead and finish some of these questions here, and then we'll go ahead and uh, end it for this week's live Q&A. So Caleb asks, how often does the tendon need to be checked and retentioned? You, I would check it every 50 hours just to make sure. It's not that hard to do. Once you've done it, um, one time, it's pretty easy to check and, and it's easy to tension. The newer motors, yes, are a lot easier to tension than the old motors because of the bolt location in the uh, motion base itself. But it's still the same rules apply. So those guys that have the new HDRs, it is a little bit easier because you can get a 916 socket on it with an extension instead of an extension welded onto a crow's foot, crow's and, foot. And, try, <laughs> and beat your knuckles up. And yeah. trust me, Mike and I have both done enough as like, you know, We've all started on the line somewhere you yeah. know, to get where we are. So I remember those bloody knuckle days of, of the, of oh, the yeah. crow's foot. Uh -huh. so. Throwing that ranch across. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing the ranch now. <laughs> Um, so what I'm going to do, Caleb, uh, I'm actually going to ha hand out this Echo Mallard Madness 11 DVD for you. Sweet. Um, go ahead and PM us your information. We'll go ahead and get this over to you. Um, and then Taylor Lightsey says, also, I have seen that Echo video, Micah. Oh, you have seen it. That's cool. Maybe you can give it to one of your buddies. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and end oh, it. Hold, hold on. Well, did, we did actually we, got a couple more questions yeah, here, I believe. We, did we get marks? Maybe I missed it. Um, how long did it take? So, yep. Yeah, we, did, we got that one. Okay. Oh, we got one more. Kyler, with the new motors being EFI, do you have a check engine light, for instance, a way to see an error or a way yes. to see where there is an issue? Yeah, there's a check engine light on the tachometer. Are right next to it so if you have codes flashing the light will flash tell you the codes if it's overheating you know stuff like that it's, um, low oil shut down so it's that that new EFI motor is really monitored by the electronics very so, cool okay I think we also had a question about the uh, sprockets 
and how to remove how to remove that. You wanna do you wanna show them? Yeah, I was talking to Keith earlier today. Um, a lot of customers, they a lot of people out there, they don't know how to. Uh, they have their sprocket, and for some reason, they got water in it. It gets rusty. It gets uh, it gets stuck. So, I actually I don't know if, how many people know. There is a there. You have three holes. This is a tapered. Um, what is it? What's oh, the name? Bushing. bushing. This is a tapered bushing. You cannot just put a grab a puller, a gear puller, and just pull that thing out of there. There is a trick for that, and um, I wanted to show you guys. There is this two set screws over here, and as you notice, there's three holes. This third hole right here serves the purpose. It's not just for looks. You can just put that thing in there, and it pops it right out. Now, if that doesn't happen, what you can do, you can grab a piece of a, a two by four or a rubber mallet and just tap that gear. Just, just tap it until it gets unstuck and it'll just go right back out. That's a, that's a really good question. Keith has is, is been having some calls about it and uh, we just wanted to uh, address, that, address issue. that issue. No, definitely, and I think that's a good, I, I'm see glad the, you actually brought it up. See the slit in it, it's actually sawed almost in half, so it can clamp on and, and loosen up. If you put a screwdriver in there, um, you're probably going to break it. It'll break in half, so I don't suggest using a screwdriver for that slot to loosen it up. Um, they, they will be tight on the shaft, even though you do pop them loose, and sometimes you're just going to have to work with it and, and get it off but um don't jam a screwdriver in there exactly yeah <laughs> or you'll buy a new bush yep. <laughs> get a new taper lock yep. good luck with that one huh mm -hmm. all right so we're going to go ahead and end it here i just want to say thank you enrique because i know you're super busy for coming out of your way and be able to help explain some of this Paulo, I know you're busy and you got a bunch over here you yeah. need to get going. Um, so we'll let you get back to it. Once again, thanks, Mike, and thanks, Keith. Thank you. Um, thank you guys as well. Also, tomorrow, um, we're actually going to be doing a Facebook Live. We're going to, um, Jeff and I, and also Logan, one of the engineers, and Juan, who is the other manager, we're actually going to be out on an XL F4 with the Mud Buddy 4400. Um, so make sure to tune in tomorrow. We'll be doing a Facebook Live out there showing you the trim switch and up. Uh, couple other awesome things so once again thanks guys and uh next week make sure to come in same time next week and we'll be doing station three for you so once again have a good week and stay out of trouble